about three days ago on the 24th of March, DeepSeek released a new version of their non-reasoning LLM and they made it completely open source. So if you happen to have a top spec Mac Studio with 512 gigabytes of RAM, then, then you could run the full DeepSeek LLM, which would be able to generate about 20 words per second. And the performance of this LLM would be about the same as ChatGPT4. So this marks a massive shift in the way that users are going to be able to interact with LLMs. So at the moment, basically all computation that's done with LLMs happens in sort of large data centers that are owned by, you know, Anthropic, OpenAI, Google, and these, these sorts of companies. And because DeepSeek have open sourced this model, it's likely that we'll see computation moving from these data sets into kind of smaller, sort of more democratized systems. So why this is interesting is it's not like, you know, right now everybody's going to go out and buy a top spec Mac Studio for 10 grand and then use that on there, you know, and then stop using uh, ChatGPT. You know, this wouldn't make sense for most people. But what we're seeing is a sort of exponential progress in the capabilities of running LLMs on sort of smaller hardware. So we're, you know, we're seeing exponential progress in the capabilities of AI, you know, on the, the largest, for the, sort of the best models. So these are what you get when you sort of pay for ChatGPT or Claude or whatever. You get access to the sort of bleeding edge uh, AI models, and these are increasing at a exponential rate. But because of that, also the kind of smaller models are also increasing at a fast rate. And, and so examples of this are you can run kind of open source models just on if, if you have a sufficiently fast laptop, like it doesn't have to be particularly good. Like if you have, say, my laptop has 24 gigabytes of RAM, and this is sufficient for it to be able to run uh, sort of quantized versions of these larger LLMs where they kind of reduce the number of parameters and the, the sort of precision with which the parameters are used. Um, and so it's possible to run these LLMs on, uh, you know, smaller hardware and the capabilities of an LLM running on a laptop, they're only going to increase. And at the moment, they're increasing very rapidly. You know, so within, say, a year, you could potentially get performance on a laptop that's running a model locally. You could potentially get the same performance as the bleeding edge LLMs at the moment with models that are running locally. And this could be really disruptive for the current way that the sort of AI industry is structured. So at the moment, you have big companies like Claude and OpenAI. And whenever anyone executes a query, that gets sent to Claude, OpenAI, Google, whatever. And then they can make money off those requests. But because of these open source models like DeepSeek, which are able to outperform the uh, sort of proprietary models from ChatGPT and Claude, say, because they, uh, people are going to move away from using this to either using, you know, to either using the DeepSeek API or some other version of DeepSeek that's hosted by somebody else, or just run things locally. And this is a really, and this is, and this has the potential to be really disruptive for these AI companies. So, so at the moment, say like OpenAI and Anthropic, these have really been leaders in developing sort of new models and uh, progressing AI, but there's going to be a kind of a move away from these models towards the open source um, ones because they're, they have uh, some advantages. Main advantages are that because these models are open source, anybody can run them. And so there's no, and so it sort of commoditizes the price of running the queries. So you know, anyone can set up a server that is running these things if they have enough money. And so the price of executing a large language model query 
will drop very close to just the, the, the bare cost of, of the, the compute performance. Whereas at the moment, you have to pay for the kind of intellectual property that you get by using OpenAI or Claude. And so this is going to be a massive shift um, away from these kind of dominant few companies uh, to sort of a more like democratized um, situation. And I think this is really good for the, <laughs> the world or society, right? If you're in a situation where the cheapest way of performing some kind of knowledge-based task is by asking an LLM, you know, instead of asking a human. You don't, you don't want to be in a situation where a few companies have a large monopoly on the capabilities of doing knowledge work. So having these open source models is really beneficial because anyone can set up a, you know, anyone who has a computer will be able to compete with kind of the bleeding edge of the of the models. So basically, because you have these open source models that are available, that are available, and they're increasingly being able to compete with the proprietary versions from the, um, you know, from OpenAI and Claude, both in terms of the cost per query and also the quality of the output. That means that we won't be in a situation where all of all of the knowledge work is executed by a select few companies and that's a good situation to be in you know so so if you don't have this this concentration of power it's kind of interesting to ask well what will the future look like for running these models and i think there's definitely use cases where models will be run locally rather than using the apis of the uh, specific companies so for example quite a lot of use cases for ai will be kind of processing documents and very often these documents will be, um, you know, very <laughs> private documents that you don't want to be sending to, um, you, don't want, you don't want to send this information over the internet to the servers. So, and so the way that you can use AI on these sort of private documents is to run a local version of the LLM and only talk to it. And so at the moment, people would be reluctant to do this because the quality of the output that you would get from a local LLM is going to be much worse than what you would get if you send it, you know, if you send something to, to chat GPT. But with DeepSeek and other open source models, the quality of the output from local models is increasing very quickly. And very soon you'll get, it'll get to a point where you can run lo models locally that probably aren't as good as the bleeding edge from OpenAI or Anthropic, but they're sufficiently good to be able to do the work that you want to do with them, you know, so you're probably always going to be able to get better performance by using an API to get the kind of bleeding edge models from, but you know, in six months time, the capabilities of software running on, you know, local hardware is going to be very good. I mean, you can even at the moment, you can run the reasoning model by DeepSeek on a phone. Um, and you know, they're going to DeepSeek are going to release uh, version two soon. And this is expected to be uh, open sourced as well. And so the situation where the only way of getting good AI output is by sending requests to API servers, this is no longer the case. Really. Um, and this is a really interesting situation to be in.